not adjust your tracking. You are now listening to the VH Saturday podcast. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of VHS Saturday, the show where we discuss these strange, unusual, odd, and obscure VHS tapes that we obtain through thrift, gift, and grift. As always, I am Henry. And I'm Allison. And this week, we're looking at two fan submissions. That's right. This week, it is fan submission week. So we got two tapes from two of our fans. Um, We are looking at Hollywood Home Video. By Van Jasmine. From our friend Van Jasmine. And we also have McMurderer, the latest wacky adventure from Janice Click. If you have something that you think would be really good for us to cover, send us a DM on any of our socials. We would love to make this like a more regular segment. Yes, we do have more tapes from fans that we want to cover in the future. So please send us any submissions. If you have any, send them in the mail. We will gladly accept them. Either submissions or even something like a recommendation. Like yeah, definitely. Something that we could obtain elsewhere and... Go ahead and cover. We could obtain it through thrift, (laughs) gift, or grift. Speaking of obtaining things, we have a shop now of sorts. We have stickers that are available. They're going to be $3. They are about two inches tall, 11 and a half inches wide. Oh, yeah. The shop is currently in production, but we do have stickers on hand. So go ahead and send us a DM on any of our socials to get one of those. Yeah, we're setting up the shop on our website right now. Um, But if you cannot wait that long, which I understand because these stickers are badass. They look super rad. They're They're holographic. Mm -hmm. They're amazing. Just like DM us on, you know, whatever. Send us an email. VHSaturday at gmail.com. Email's a little old school. Is it? It feels a little old school. But it makes sense for like VHS. It's all good. When was the last time you looked at your email? Every day. Not at work. Every day. You look at your personal email every day. Yeah, I check my email multiple times a day. I think you're a liar. I'm dead fucking serious. Do you want to see how many like unopened emails I have? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I have a lot of unopened emails too. I have like 13,000 unopened emails. But I still check because like I'm always shopping online. Well, yeah. (laughs) Okay, you check your tracking? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So, you know, just getting stuff in the mail. It's exciting. It's like a a half lie. What? (laughs) You don't check your email. I do. (sighs) Yeah, I look in my inbox like what fucking LinkedIn notifications I have. When was the last time you sent a personal email? A personal? Not the ones to me that you have sent because (laughs) who sends personal emails? We specifically have sent each other emails because, lol, who does that? (laughs) That seems to be a common theme in things that we (laughs) do together. (laughs) Let's start a VHS podcast because, (laughs) lol, who still uses VHS tapes? (laughs) Well, apparently a lot of people because... These two tapes that we reviewed this week are made by other VHS enthusiasts, yeah. just like us. VHS artists. Uh, both of them are pretty well-known artists uh, out there. Uh, Van Jasmine's Hollywood Home Video is pretty interesting. It's a compilation of home movies, essentially, that they shot over in Hollywood. It is exactly what the title says. It is a Hollywood home video. Yeah, that, that's... <laughs> that's the best way to describe it but i didn't really expect that when we, when we got it no i my expectations were so off i had to watch this twice before i like really got it <laughs> so i guess since we're already talking about it we'll we'll start out talking about hollywood home video sure we received this tape first so uh it only makes sense let's talk about it van jasmine told me he was heavily inspired by dog me 95 which is a filmmaking movement that was started in 1995 the only exception being really that uh, it wasn't shot on 35 millimeter. He shot on a HD camcorder. And even though he wants this video to be viewed on video VHS, he um, shot it on an HD camcorder that he bought at Fry's. Rest in peace, Fry's. <laughs> yeah, that's I, I when he told me that it was like the day after Fry's went out of business, actually. Really? Yeah. Wow. Like it was perfectly fitting. <laughs> um but he went into it not knowing what the story would really be like. Eventually, the they reshot like the first part of it. The first ha- chunk of the movie had five pages of script. Script, really? Yeah. When they're talking about uh, the see me in twenty twenty, it's gonna be a different vibe, huh? Which, if only we knew. If only, if only we knew. You know, when he shot that, it wasn't ne- near twenty twenty. 
And then pandemic happened. Huh. This this movie is really interesting. It's how do you even describe it? It is a compilation of short clips, much like a home movie, which is what he was going for. Um, it feels very artsy still. It, there is a lot of. It feels random, but there is a lot of deliberate choices that he was making. Um, and really, it's filming the real Hollywood. The point of it was to showcase the real Hollywood and not the Hollywood that, well, Hollywood likes you to think of. Everyone that's a tourist comes there and they expect to see, you know, glitz and glamour. And me and you have made jokes about it starting on our first episode about how Hollywood <laughs> and L.A. and just they're kind of shitty. Yeah. In ESP, we we made a joke about that <laughs> because <laughs> I went to I actually went to L.A. for the first time um, New Year's two years ago. Um, I went with some friends and we were staying for like a week and you see L.A. in the movies and mm -hmm. it's like Hollywood palm trees glamorous rich people skinny drinking smoothies it's like you know it's like a dream and then i actually went to la and i was like this place is a fucking shithole <laughs> it's I, disgusting i was in la right at the beginning of the pandemic and uh is and just all, all around um that area and i was staying there for like a week and my Airbnb smelled like piss, not inside, but as soon as you stepped outside, it smelled like piss. And um, that piss was just baking in the, the California sun. <laughs> oh my God. You know, what's really funny when I was in L.A. and we were walking through the streets, we found someone took a piece of notebook paper and they taped it up on a wall in a random alley. And it just said, do not piss here. L.A.P.D. <laughs> Like just written on paper. I'm sure that deterred so many people from pissing there. <laughs> when I people see people probably pissed there on purpose. When I like, see a sign you. saying "Do not piss here," I know I should not piss there. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> so okay, it's just these kids. I say kids because I know that they are, but. They are over 18, but younger than 21. I wouldn't say that. No. Well, OK, I only say that because there's one clip where they're like, oh, can we go to a strip club? And he's like, yeah, if it's 18 plus. Yeah, but my thing about this is all strip clubs are 18 plus. Are they? You can't get into a strip club if you're a minor. No, I mean, like some are 21 plus, right? I'm sure. If they serve alcohol. I would just imagine that the uh, the bar doesn't serve you. I've never been to a strip club, so in, I here, don't okay. Here's know. A, in Washington State, where we're at, strip clubs can't serve alcohol. What? Yeah, dude. Really? I had to drink Sprite. <laughs> 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 I went once. Uh, I I went once with a few friends, and we popped around to a few different ones. I felt awkward the entire time. Not my vibe. If that's your thing. <laughs> Great man, not for me. Yeah, uh, looking Especially but not if touching. You can't drink. Yeah, dude, you, you can't fucking drink. I thought you could drink, and then they tell me, yeah, no, you can't. And I'm like, what? And the bouncer's like, yeah, it's actually Washington state law, and like, so the bars just serve fucking soda. It's free soda, fortunately. Okay. So I just, I was just sipping on fucking Sprite the entire time. <laughs> oh it wasn't even god. like that McDonald's Sprite that gets you. Oh my god! Speak, which is, Speaking yeah, of McDonald's, McDonald's yes, a, a strange coincidence, but there's like a overlapping theme in these two videos of McDonald's. There's yeah. McDonald's imagery. Uh, there's Mick imagery all over these covers. And Van Jasmine chose that specifically because um, it's an, it's supposed to be anti corporate. You know, that's what this whole vibe of this tape is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So he chose like McDonald's imagery, Coca-Cola imagery. Um, but it turns out because he, the way he shot it, it falls under fair use. So he could use it as much as he wants. Same thing with all the music, actually. He didn't have to pay rights for any of the music because it was shot documentary style. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know if I would classify a Hollywood home video as anti-corporate as much as I would say it's just pro-drug. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> so the tape is we haven't really gone into what the tape is really about. Yeah. Besides shitting all over shitty Hollywood. Uh, <laughs> it's a culmination of both the queer community and uh drug trap community yeah i would say that the group of i want to say kids i feel so like i'm older than them but are you like you're still so. in your late 20s like i turned 30 in like right. less than two months but these guys are they're definitely like in, in their 20s so like well i guess just because like they're having so much fun i'm like they're kids <laughs> yeah no i legit miss parties like watching yeah. this again this is the third time i've seen it now and watching i'm like fuck man i miss parties so much and you're like if you're going to parties where people are throwing gasoline on fires i don't <laughs> know i'm like well that's usually me at fucking parties so like the way that i thought about this was like okay so the the people, like the group of people that this centers around, they're, you know, um, they're queer. They have colored hair. They have piercings. They have face tattoos. They're going to drag shows. They're going to drag shows. They, art shows. It's the queer art community. They do all kinds of drugs and they go to these crazy it's, it's, parties. It's two different groups of people, two different like circles of, of individuals that, uh, Van Jasmine actually sort of acted as, act as a bit of a catalyst between the two of them. Hmm. Yeah. I think it's just very much like you could just say alternative lifestyle. Yeah, both ways. Yeah. Mm hmm. And Not like the only thing in both ways, but the way that I thought of it was like, these are the kinds of people where I would like I would meet them and I th think they were cool. But I wouldn't hang out with them because I'm afraid that like if either I'm going to die or one of them is going to die. The the shots of them just hanging around like the streets of L.A. staying up all night. It reminded me of being in my early 20s. Yeah, me too. Definitely. And before I was like before I joined the military, before I got married, mm -hmm. before I, I got divorced. I used to go to clubs in Chicago when I turned 21. I never was a club person, but uh the house parties they showed like I will go to a house party. Mm -hmm. Like usually though the house parties I would go to um had a band playing. Yeah. I went to a, I went to and still was up until the pandemic like going to a lot of house shows, a lot of basement shows here in the Seattle area. I miss the fuck out of that. Holy shit. That seems more common out here. I don't know. Like, personally, for me, I did most of my partying at anime conventions. So it looked, you know, I, I a little know, different than this kind of party. I know that, like, <laughs> anime convention partying up is, like, what my friends really were doing a lot of times. But, like, I wasn't. Okay. Because I was kind of usually babysitting my younger brother mm. and a lot of my friends that would come with me to anime conventions were on the younger side and i was the i was the old man oh god you were the dad yeah that'd be dad friend <laughs> you're the con dad <laughs> so uh the movie starts though with a lot of weed a whole fuck ton of, i think it mm -hmm. opens up with a shot of like the plants the, yeah mm -hmm. and um and we have a former child actor uh, showing off all his weed. Yep, and they're uh, making hash on like Facebook Live or something. Yeah. <laughs> lots and lots of weed. Yeah. Um, and then we go to like some tarot stuff, right? Yeah, just a lot of really short clips. You know, they're they're at parties. They're walking around the streets. They're looking at the houses. They're skateboarding. Going to art shows. Yeah. Dressing up at art shows. Um, recording people fucking. You know, here, this like this is my third time watching this, and somehow that got past me the first two times. Well, yeah, you blink and you miss it. Yeah, it's, it's over they like are that. really quick clips that mm -hmm. like I did not see the first two times I watched this, which is interesting. So this is something that rewatching it multiple times yields different results. Like, that's not something I necessarily expected. Yeah, the first time that I watched it, I had a very different expectation of what it actually was. So um, watching it, I was like, um, when you were describing it to me, you were talking about what's his name? Lil, Lil Zan? Lil Zan. I was going to say Lil Peep, Lil, Lil Peep, Pump. Lil like, I can't, I don't even, <laughs> I'm a millennial. Like, I don't know the difference <laughs> who's who. I don't know. 
So a little pump has a cameo in this, like very, very brief, just like the fucking scene. If you blink, little pumps like gone because he's just like, don't uh, don't film this. Yeah. And they film it in like a house that little peep lived in. And there's like a, a quick shot again of like a billboard that says R.I.P. Little peep. And uh, so wait, it was Lil Peep's house. And Lil Pump. Was in there. Was there. If I recall, it was Lil Peep's house or it was the house of that he was staying in. And it was Lil Peep's friend around the time he passed. Okay. Yeah. I thought that this movie was going to be about him. Oh. Like, I feel like just the description that you gave me, I, I didn't know what to expect. I was like, Hollywood home video. Oh, it's a home video about... Little pump or something or I don't know. And so I went into it watching this like, you know, I see like the first guy on the screen with the face tattoo. I was like, is that is that little pump? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I honestly don't know. <laughs> so I I'll admit too, I don't uh I don't listen. You listen to more more rap and hip hop than I do. A lot of it is more like old school i feel like there was a threshold where i just like stopped listening and then it got to a point where i hadn't listened for so long that i was like so out of it i'm like i can't keep up anymore like any a lot of hip-hop i listen to is from the like early 90s mid 90s me too and yeah. throughout the 80s mm -hmm. the 80s are just like me i guess uh -huh. <laughs> i'm an 80s kid mm -hmm. you know like it's a reoccurring trend on this fucking podcast yeah for sure and like, you know, the music I listen to is a lot of heavy metal, a lot of synth wave, a lot of punk music, um, very different like groups, but very similar vibes to like a lot of the the trap house vibe and the punk house vibe are very similar in all honesty. Absolutely. Uh, they go to drag shows, right? Yeah. They they swing by Scientology. And mm -hmm. um, they're talking with the Scientologist on the street. I've done that. <laughs> the one in Seattle. I, I would talk with the Mormons whenever they came to my oh, house. I would talk to the Mormons, too. Like the, I have so many copies of the Book of Mormon just because oh I'm polite. They're like, oh, do you want one? I was like, yes, definitely. Jehovah's Witnesses give you a lot of copies of the Watchtower. <laughs> I actually had uh, growing up. I had a friend who was a Jehovah's Witness and she and her parents would just like every time I would go over to their house, they'd like send me home with all these little like pamphlets and shit. And I remember one time I was reading through it and like, keep in mind, I was like 12 or whatever. And like. I'm looking through and there's this one thing that's like, is masturbation wrong? And it was straight up just like, yeah, yes. you shouldn't do that. And I was like, I'm out. <laughs> no, it, sorry. OK, I have two two quick anecdotes. OK, so <laughs> one about Joe, Joe's witnesses. My friend uh, Brent was Mormon and the Jehovah's Witnesses showed up and he's like, I got this guys. Yeah, he had this like voice like this, <laughs> like big, tall ass motherfucker. He talks like this. And it's just <laughs> looking like Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> so he's like, I got this, guys. And we're like, and I'm like, OK. And he like answers the door and they're like, hi, would you like to talk about, you know, whatever? And he's like, we're Mormon. I'm like, oh, <laughs> and they left. And I'm telling you right now, I don't know if they keep track or fucking what, because I'm a Buddhist. So like, and I was raised Catholic and I was an atheist for a long ass time. So like I have no idea about what they do. But they stopped coming to my house. Oh, yeah. They were like, we're, we're Mormon. And he's like, OK, they left. And that was when I was like 15. And when I moved out of there like six, seven years later when I joined the military. Fucking they never came again. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know what's the deal with that. Yeah, They're like, oh, yeah, that house on, on that, that street. They're, mm, they're lost Mormon. Cause. <laughs> lost cause. Move along. I boys. don't know what the deal is between the, <laughs> between Mormons and and. Uh, Oh, honey, uh, <laughs> where do we start? But uh, so Scientology, like I would talk to him. Like, here's a funny anecdote about Scientology. So I know somebody who he was in prison for 10 years for making meth. OK. And they came out of prison. And there's a lot of things that were foreign to them after 10 years in prison. So much sure. things had changed in the year 2000, 2010. Absolutely. And he was talking about how like, the CD-ROM is going to change the world. It's like, bro, you know, Blu-ray holds like literally a hundred, a hundred, you know, like 10, 10 times that. Right. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, what? And I was like, yeah, this fucking thumb drive 
is like a four gigabyte thumb drive I carry on my keychain. Oh and that's God. like, it's like seven <laughs> CDs. Because I mean, in that time, it's like you go from CD-ROMs to like everyone owning a smartphone. Yeah. That it's like, that's a big fucking leap. Yeah. He was one day talking about Battlefield Earth. Nice. And he's talking about how great of a movie it is. I was like, ah. Eh, how it's... great it is? Yeah, he likes that movie. All right. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> I was like, this is just Scientology propaganda. And he's like, no, it's not. And I was like, yeah, it is. This is basically the story of Scientology, just, you know, retold slightly differently. And he starts arguing. He's totally I mean, like John Travolta's in it. Like, <laughs> here's the other thing. He was like, Battlefield Earth is written by L. Ron Hubbard based off the book. I was like, yeah. And he launched and he launched the Church of Scientology. He's like, what? I was like, yeah, he founded the Church of Scientology. Wow. And he's like, oh, and it's, it's, like, <laughs> it's, it's like you're a little gotcha. It's like just really just it's, driving the point. Home. Yeah, <laughs> that's incredible. Anyways, Hollywood Home Video. It's kind of hard to talk about because it's kind of the same thing with Dance and Grannies where we were like, there's not really like a plot per se. So like it's how literally a compilation. Along. Yeah, it's just like a bunch of short clips put together. If you go to Van Jasmine's, you know, um, Instagram page, you can watch trailers and it's very interesting. There's a lot of interesting scenes like uh, the part where they're like, I fuck with aliens, bro. I'm like, yeah. Same. <laughs> Same. Yeah. It's just a lot of like, I don't know the the everyday life of these people in L.A. who maybe want to be famous, but aren't quite there yet. Let's uh, let's talk about the uncomfortable scenes. Yes, The gun okay. scene. Yeah. So there's a scene where they're tripping on acid and they start fucking with guns and yeah definitely made me a little uncomfortable i was like this is a recipe for disaster it was a young yogi and he pulled it on trapzilla and uh i think then turned around and trapzilla was trying to pistol whip him yeah um yeah it was hard to tell because i wasn't there so when you're watching it just on video it's are they fucking around or are they serious i'm just saying like if you're on drugs and you have a gun and you cock the gun and you're putting it in my face, I'm like, I'm I'm fucking out of there. Yeah, no, okay? for sure. I'm like, gone. <laughs> I don't like, fuck with that. Like, even if I was also on acid, I would fail. Dude, when I'm on acid, the last thing I want to do is, like, touch something scary. You remember oh. when we did acid that one time yeah. and we kept on talking about, like, oh, let's go to the roof. <laughs> I bet the roof looks badass. So, like, and we were going to go, but, like, we ended up just being too scared and we never <laughs> went. <laughs> so I live in this, like, this high rise, essentially. It has a nice view of Seattle on the roof. And we're like, yo, it that would be sick, sick. <laughs> oh, right now because these <laughs> colors are something fucking else. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't make it out of the apartment no, because we're just I have scared. like neon lighting in my apartment too. And it was just like, I don't know, I think it, the neon lighting of my it place felt trapped us in. Yeah, oh yeah. And so like when we, like you saw too much detail and shit when you went in actual light and we we're like, that's kind of scary. I don't want to go out there. <laughs> Speaking of taking drugs, a guy overdoses in this movie on mushrooms. Yeah, he's like, oh, I ate three bags. And then we cut to him in the hospital, like tripping fucking like, balls. We cut to him in the hospital and his eyes are dilated to like, is that the word I want to use? Dilated? Yes, they okay. were dilated like 100%. And then shit. like, this shows like the tag and it says overdose. And I'm like, oh, fuck. One, I didn't make an overdose on mushrooms. I think, didn't he say that it wasn't like an actual overdose? It was just like, that's what they put on the yeah, paperwork. They mostly right. just needed to like exactly. keep him safe and give him right. fluids. So I, I, yeah, I got that written down here. So uh, Van Jasmine explained that scene to me because I asked him what it's about. And basically he got way too high and he went and talked to a park ranger <laughs> while he was like high oh, yeah. on fucking shrooms. And they didn't know what the fuck to do. So they were like, you should probably yeah, be just, around just, medical yeah, professionals. Yeah, let's take you to the hospital. You're obviously on drugs. Yeah. And he was so fucking out of it that, like, I'm sure he couldn't, like, tell anybody anything. So they're like, OK, he's overdosing on yeah. something. Mm -hmm. And, like, I guess Van Jasmine was, like, looking around for him, like, in the park. He was, like, shouting his name. And, oh like, people God. thought he was, like, looking for his son or looking for his dog. 
I think it's one of the first quotes in the entire movie where he says, like, drugs are fun until drugs are no longer fun. And, and I'm like, yes, that is very true. I think that's part of the part that um, Van Jan has been said they actually scripted. Mm. Like some of that dialogue at the beginning of the movie is really scripted. That way it kind of sets everything else up because this was filmed over three years. Wow, really? Three years? Three years. So he had thousands and thousands and thousands of clips to like shuffle through and like, oh my God, fill, create some sort of narrative out of. There was no, no plan when he started filming. So it's, it's very organic, a lot of it. It definitely feels that way. Speaking of, um, the way he he set up all the footage, um, it, he separated it all by color. Black, blue, white, red, gold. Sometimes it was a symbolic. Sometimes it was actually there on screen. And it's it's very subtle, but it's interesting to, to kind of well, if you know that and you watch the movie, mm. it's interesting to take note of that. I didn't know that and I didn't notice that. Yeah. Maybe it's like, you know, have you ever seen the like behind the scenes of like Disney movies and yeah. stuff? How like. They they set up the story in colors mm -hmm. and then like the artists go in and like, yeah, they make it like to show the emotions and stuff. So that's just some classic artistic mm -hmm. genius shit. Speaking of artistic geniuses, at one point when they're doing coke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of the times, right? What does he call it? Heroin. Yeah. Or like snortable weed. Or he's he's a uh, he's doing blow in his apartment. This is the same guy that was saging an apartment and it set off the smoke alarm, <laughs> which had me cackling. That's I, pretty funny. I I, that, I think I did that in this apartment when I first moved in here. Really? When I moved out my old place, um, this Native American woman that lived nearby me, she knew that I was kind of like going through some shit in my life, so she gave me like some sage and some other shit, and she also gave me like a dime bag of weed. Okay. <laughs> like, uh, he like gave me a hug. She's like, she's like, be safe. I was like, thanks, man. Here are and some plants that will make you feel better if you burn them. <laughs> this one inhale. This one don't. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, the same guy that set off the smoke alarm. I don't know if Jet Van Jasmine gave me his name. He gave me the names of a lot of people in this, but I don't think I got that one. They're like talking about Twin Peaks and the movie for Twin Peaks and somebody off camera says, wait, David Lynch did a movie. Oh and God. I'm like, oh, my God. Cut like, back to our fucking pilot episode of this podcast where I was bitching about you making me watch David Lynch art films. I love David Lynch. I know. He's my favorite. I, I guess is he my favorite? I don't, I don't know. know. I, don't... I I like Twin Peaks, but man, those art films were fucking I, obnoxious. I, know. I did not like no. them. Alphabet was creepy and great. No, and not the one where the do not like one one where there's just like the creepy looking people like just vomit like yeah. The Good first stuff. time I saw Hollywood Home Video, I did watch it twice. The first time that I watched it, like I'm not gonna lie, I did not like it. It kind of like made me uncomfortable and I was like, what's the point? I don't get it. Like, I think my expectations were off. But then after we talked to Van Jasmine about it more and, you know, like gave him the feedback of what our initial thoughts were and hearing his responses to it and then watching it again. It's like, OK, I get it. It makes a lot more sense now. Again, I was thinking this was about one of the 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 Lil P's, you know, uh, someone who falls under the the Lil P category. <laughs> oh God, oh God, no! <laughs> what the fuck? I was saying, no, God, I don't know if their P's are Lil. You know, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I'm not even about that. using like, like an umbrella <laughs> term here. You're saying, what the fuck? God damn it! What the like, what is wrong with me? The little peas. Well, you know, the little, the, the neutral rappers with their little. Are you on, like, gonna be on the next Dancing Grannies? God damn it. <laughs> That's what happens. Don't ever get old. You, you people in Hollywood home video, don't ever grow up. You youthful queer kids in <laughs> you, Hollywood. <laughs> Enjoy it while it, it lasts. It really reminds me of the queer scene up here in Seattle, though. Yeah, It really sure. did. Mm -hmm. Um, so... That's nice. <laughs> there's a there's another part where they, they met some random guy who 
said he wanted to make a movie. He's like, I got a real Banksy. Let's make a movie, me burying a Banksy. Oh, is that when they're like out in the desert? Yeah. With that one chick who's like smoking the cigarette. Yeah. And she was a she was a Norwegian actress that was staying in their Airbnb at the time. She looks like Lana Del Rey. Yeah, I guess she does a little bit. She when she was like, this is going to be my big break. I thought it was sarcasm about like this stupid little thing where they're burying a Banksy. Oh, wait, but, was she serious? Well, the movie that she was in won an award in Berlin huh. last year. Yeah. So like it, I think it's just um, a language barrier thing where it came off as sarcastic to oh. me, <laughs> but it's just her accent and okay. her, you know, huh. so huh. there's that. There was one other uncomfortable scene. I couldn't tell if there was a drag show or if it was just an art show, but they like they have like a book with a dong on it and like Oh, it's like a Klansman. Like like reading from the dong book. And there's like I think it's supposed to be like a cult. Yeah. Person's like laying down and they have like balloons on their chest and person's apprehensive to stab it and he's like well, why are you using a real fucking knife? I'm like, <laughs> why the fuck are you using a real fucking knife? These people, they just like to live life on the edge. That's what they do. They get off on it. Same. He like, <laughs> he like pops the balloon and she's just like, oh, yes. <laughs> Balloons are a, for some reason, a very popular fetish. Just get like a fake knife and like tape a fucking pin to it. <laughs> I don't know. I think they they have fun. Getting fucked up and playing with weapons. Yeah. I think that's just what they like to do. Yeah. That's what happens at DEF CON. <laughs> Except it happens in Vegas. So they have like, they just shoot automatic guns in like the desert. Oh Bunch of God. hackers that are like fucking drunk. <laughs> Good times. Yeah, man. Hollywood home video is, is interesting. It is very interesting. Yeah, especially like the part where um, he's like, I could throw better parties than this. And like, uh, <laughs> I feel that. I've been to parties where I could throw a fucking better party than this. Yeah, some of them seem cool. Some of them seem kind of lame. Like there were some like raves or whatever that they went to and it was just like a couple people in a room just dancing. They went to some cool looking art shows. Some of them were dressed up as art. And with the art show, there was a bit where they're talking about the Matrix and no one could remember which pills were which. <laughs> but they took both. <laughs> and then... uh then it ends with them going to a uh, drag show after they get in one of those giant elevators that reminds me of a boss fight elevator from the video game Streets of Rage on the Sega Genesis. But I couldn't tell if they were going to strip clubs when it was like a drag show. Was it a strip club? There was a neon dick that was uh, animated to jizz. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty sick. Weird jizzing is also happening in McMurderer. We'll get to that soon. Yeah. Uh, the hash-slinging slasher is how they and it's supposed to represent death by van jasmine told me it's actually pulled from another short video he did hmm. which is referencing spongebob's hash slinging slasher classic which is why like it looks like death and i when i first watched it i thought it was death and because it's on vhs i didn't notice that the hash slinging slasher was like, holding a fucking spatula yeah <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of spatulas from sponges that make fucking burgers Let's move on yes. to McMurder. So if our listeners are interested in watching Hollywood Home Video or any of Van Jasmine's other videos, where can they go to find it? Van Jasmine has a store. He's also on Instagram. Go to his Instagram. We'll link it in our post about this episode. You can find uh, his store through there. The tape is like six bucks, so it's very inexpensive. I think it's interesting. Yeah, it's a good watch. It's, it was interesting. It's like it's like half an hour. Pretty interesting. Uh, I think it would be really interesting if you were from like a small town or something and just see <laughs> what it's really like. Yeah, if you want to find out what L.A. is really like without <laughs> actually having to go there. <laughs> L.A. traffic, am I right, guys? <laughs> I have friends in the Bay Area that curse it every fucking day. I know. Like, I think it's bad in Seattle sometimes, like, because I live in West Seattle. Our roads are like the worst part of living here. Yeah. Hands down. They make no sense. It's like, awful. Our bridge in Seattle got fucked up at the beginning of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
West Seattle going to like Cap Hill used to be like 10 minutes. Now it's like over 30. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Super shitty. Like Nick doesn't want to come over anymore. Aww. Because he's like, that drive sucks. Yeah, I don't really blame him. Yeah. So, Mick Murderer. Yes. So, fucking, okay. Mick, Mick Murderer. Murderer. <laughs> what is, is a, there to say about this? Movie? Mick Murderer. Okay, so the f- Mick Murderer. I really got to hand it to Janice Click. The presentation on everything on the social media for it is fucking great. There's a lot of people in the VHS community that have been like buying this because it's so fucking weird. The front cover has some really interesting art. And now after watching the movie, we went in completely blind. I didn't watch the trailer or anything. Right. Me neither. It's like the like Ronald McDonald cartoon that they sold on VHS in like the late 90s. -hmm. Like they perfectly emulated that art style. But like these are all characters that are in this movie. And I think that was fucking perfect. Yeah. And you could buy it in like a little Happy Meal box for 30 bucks. Janice Click was selling it with uh, a big unhappy meal box right. <laughs> and a higher quality tape. So he has it available in two forms, a cheap tape for six dollars and sixty six cents and also the thirty dollar unhappy meal. The unhappy meal is now sold out. They still have a few copies of the McMurderer normal six dollars sixty six tape. I would say definitely pick it up because the back of the box says the best way I could describe this, actually. From the kings of cringe horror comes a terrifying story of clowns, murder, corporate corruption, human sacrifice, and pure lunacy. Janice Click's newest production will have you trembling in fear and wondering, what in the hell did I just watch? Very succinct. So, I want to talk about the interesting uh, perspective that I had going into watching this. So again, I didn't look up anything about it, really, but I did go on Janice's website to see what he said about it. And what stood out to me was he said, I got blasted on crack and decided to make a movie. So that was all I knew going into this experience. Yeah, you told me about that part. And I was like, what the fuck did I just watch? Was was he really blasted on crack? I get kind of a crack vibe. I'm not going to lie. You have a lot of experience with crack? I don't <laughs> at all. However, I did look up on Google <laughs> what people are like on crack. And it said aggressive behavior. We witness aggressive behavior when... <laughs> The clown comes in on the screen. McClown is his name. And he's in a McDonald's. He's green screened into a McDonald's. And he's like, I'm the fucking clown. I'm the fucking clown. That's my picture on the wall. This is my restaurant. You come in my restaurant and eat my fries and slurp down my milkshakes. Fuck you. It's just very aggressive. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, The green screening is... uh interesting top notch <laughs> uh, i'm sure it's absolutely on pur- purpose that's uh oh but, but before we get to that part our tape was recorded over billy blank's tape <laughs> yeah so like the first like two seconds of the tape is this like motivational <laughs> speech and then we get a clip of the infamous exploding varmints yes i wow. love that like Real not that bad. i love seeing exploding varmints like but like just for the memes. Just the, yeah, it's like, ah, oh, you red letter media fan. <laughs> but uh, then we get some weird kids in angel costumes. Oh, my God. Yeah. Creepy shit. And then warning, <laughs> FBI warning. Fuck you. We got two FBI warnings. Well, the first one was for the Billy Blanks tape. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then we, FBI warning. Fuck you. <laughs> so I get a real FBI warning. Again, about, very aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> and then when it, when he goes, I'm the clown. I'm the fucking clown. I was getting Ricardo Lopez vibes. Um, if you're not familiar with Ricardo Lopez, he was the Bjork stalker, and he recorded all his like creepy vlogs, said vlogs essentially, where he's talking about Bjork, and then he's he committed suicide on tape. Um, those are all 
online if you Holy were shit. so interested in watching those. But the way he was just like aggressively talking to the camera, the way it's filmed, uh, it definitely gave me Ricardo Lopez vibes. Yeah, this tape made me it was like half the time it made me incredibly uncomfortable and the other half it had me like dying yeah laughing. i was cackling a lot with this uh i think we have very similar senses of humor but i think i'm a little bit more morbid yeah twisted yeah you like the more morbid stuff more than i do and the this shit creepy is, shit is like using as fuck to me this fucking movie is so weird it's so weird. There's like this whole part about abortion. Well, this we'll get there. This one actually has a plot. So let's let's break, let's break it down plot okay. by plot. All right. Okay. So like we got McClown, aka Ricardo Lopez here going, <laughs> I'm the fucking clown. There's somebody else that's like in a mask and they're in another part of the McDonald's and they're saying they're going to kill the fucking McClown. Yeah. He's like, I need to go to work. He's filming a promo video. Yeah. Fuck this guy. And they then, say fuck a lot. Yeah. That's fine, though. I say <laughs> fuck a lot on this podcast. I, yeah, we're not going to get monetized on YouTube with the amount I say fuck unless you start censoring this shit. <laughs> right. But, but then it cuts to like a very poorly made mannequin head of the McClown getting stabbed and like goo is just like oozing out of it. I, it reminded me of this toy in the 90s It's called the Monster Face. Essentially, it was a gory fucked up mr potato head <laughs> of sorts you could put on all these like fucked up parts and like have it like drip snot and like there's like a came with a fake scalpel you could like cut, cut it open cut and, open its fucking head and then you push the pump and it goes out yeah. it's disgusting <laughs> It was the 90s. The, like <laughs> gross out things were like all the kind of like rager boys. That is I true. wanted it so bad. <laughs> I wanted that thing in 1992. <laughs> so it really reminded me of that. Like, that's what it looked like, yeah. especially with the way the green goo was coming out. I would love it if that was actually what it is. I would love to rewatch this and see if like, oh, hey, it is Monster Face. <laughs> be perfect. I doubt it is, but it'd be perfect if it was. Um, the news like breaking news. Big Clown is dead. Yeah. And then all of like the influencers are reacting to the news. Like, who the fuck is McCloud? Fuck that guy. Yeah, everyone's like, McCloud's dead? Fuck you. Yeah. I'm fucking glad. <laughs> everyone hates McCloud. One dude is like, McCloud's fucking dead. And I'm fucking happy. Yeah. You made me fucking make fat. Yeah. Fuck you, McCloud. I, one thing I love was one of the YouTubers was like, ne uh, today on our episode, Shrek erotica and why <laughs> it's great to collect it. I was like, that's the content I crave. It's like, oh, Shrek erotica? We're going there? Fuck yeah, Shrek is love. Shrek Some is love. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then it shows uh, the guy on the cover, right? I don't know if he got his name. McClown's son. Yeah. And he's saying he misses his clown dad. And he's sitting on a couch. And he's hanging With the out. freaky baby face guy yeah. who doesn't talk. He talks in subtitles. Yeah. <laughs> and he talks about how he misses his McDad. And... <laughs> That's like him. He eats this mixed shit every fucking day. Yeah. And uh, then he's like, hey, you want to watch this porno I have? And <laughs> pulls out ESP. <laughs> of, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, it's on fucking VHS. Of course. I would be disappointed if it was not. I'd be like, really, Janice? Yeah. Like, do you really like porn? Can you really say you like porn if you don't have a tape? I was going to just mention that this is on VHS. And so, like, of course, it should. The tape should be on v the porn should be on VHS. <laughs> oh, but sure, man. Okay. <laughs> you got like uh, the porn tape collection. I'm not aware of. No, I just have I have ESP and fucking Daniel Steele's daddy. I, I have in forever ingrained in my brain this one. That VHS porn VHS that my sister had when I was like 12. Okay. And the tape was like that Nickelodeon orange, right? Oh no, that's horrible. <laughs> like, who, what kind of monster what? would put porn on an orange VHS? Like, like just mix it with your Nickelodeon that's tapes. Like, awful. Rugrats the movie. Oh no. oh no. This movie was called Ass Gas and the Mystical Glop. And 
And because of that name, I will never forget it. Like that name is forever etched into my brain. Like, what oh the my fuck? God, somebody was blasted on crack when they came up with that title. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, oh, wait so, a second. <laughs> what the fuck? What kind of do I even want to know what happened to that tape? No. I'll tell you off fucking mic. Okay. Okay. So because, it's too it's too raw, folks. It's too raw for the podcast. <laughs> I had two choices and I was like 12. I was like either that or I go on dial up and I could, you know, yeah, print out some photos. It was like 1999, 2000 or so. That's understandable. So. We're we're covering daddy next week, by the way. Just like fun, if you've made it this far into the podcast, here's a little treat for you. We're reviewing daddy next week. So. Then puts in the VHS tape. And of course, they got like a Sega Genesis next to his VCR also. Mm -hmm, Nice touch. It's some guy and he's in a supposed abortion clinic spelled with a K. (laughs) Yeah. Talk about how millions of babies are like killed every day at abortion clinics. Mm -hmm. He snuck some footage. There's like a, a baby with its head like in a shower drain. Yeah, it's just like a baby doll. With its head stuffed in a drain. And then, like, we just see, like... A doctor performing an abortion. And it's just, like, the baby doll flies out and blood splurts all over the wall. It's very slapstick, and I found it amusing, but... I was laughing. Yeah. I was laughing, but I was also saying, what the fuck is going on? You're laughing at the absurdity. Yeah. Um, This definitely has, like, home movie vibes. Which like, I love. I love. Yeah. It's very much like your friends just got blasted on crack and wanted to make a movie. <laughs> so then Mick Kid has a huge bulge. Yeah. This abortion tape gets him very erect. I was like, is that supposed to be an erection? Because it obviously the bulge doesn't look like an erection. Yeah. Like that- <laughs> comically large yeah it, and it's comically round it unless unless i mean good for him he's got like a giant chicken nugget in his crotch he's <laughs> got like a, it's i mean you want to be it would have been a good touch what instead of like a round bulge it was shaped like a like like the big mac container <laughs> <laughs> One big Mac, you know what I'm saying? So then he goes down to the basement and he drops his pants and he starts like stroking it and we see his ass. Yeah. And then like he he jizzes on French fries. Mm-hmm. But the jizz is like it's ob- clearly ketchup, and you said it's supposed to be blood in his semen, but I was like, or is the McKid like jizzing ketchup? I don't know. It's like is McDonald's in his genetics? Because apparently clown DNA mixed with French fries. Yeah, because in a dumpster, it's got to be in a dumpster. Because like he he he, he jizzed on like a tarp. Yeah, right. He has his bas- he has his Jo tarp in like, the basement. As do I. <laughs> yes. A what, bro? You don't have a Jo tarp? Who do- my- <laughs> what do you do? Use a towel? <laughs> what kind of fucking barbarian are you? <laughs> so you ain't uh, you ain't coming on your French fries, bro. <laughs> You don't put french fries in a tarp before you jack off? Like, <laughs> you sick fuck. People have no standards anymore. So, <laughs> so then he like wraps up out of shame and he like shoves it into the dumpster. Yes, he goes out back and throws his jizzed on ketchup J.O. tarp in the trash. At the same time, after he returns, Babyhead is like, have you thought about human sacrifice? Naturally. It might bring your dad back. <laughs> it's just something to think about. Just think about it. That's a very logical conclusion to yeah. make, you know, mm-hmm. as one does. If, as we learn from, you know, Law Enforcement Guide to Satanic Cults, our second episode. <laughs> Good times. So they attempt to murder somebody, but they don't follow through with it. Oh, yeah, it's like some guy is working in his garage or something. And he's like, and McKid is stalking him through the window. And he, when he's going to like walk in to surprise him, he steps on something. And so the guy working in his garage sees him 
and chases him out with like a fucking axe or something. Are you checking your email right now? You <laughs> hypocrite. You absolute <laughs> hypocrite. I'm checking my PMs on the Neo Geo forum. Okay. <laughs> but I got an email notifying me that I got a PM. Okay. <laughs> so. Mm-hmm. So then the, the human sacrifice doesn't happen, right? And he scrambles home and he's like freaking out. Like, why did I do this? Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, yeah, babyhood is a bad influence, I think. No. Yeah. He's putting some bad vibes into the universe. At the same time, we're learning that in a dumpster, the French fries and the clown DNA from his semen can create life. Yeah. The miracle of life. And then we get uh, the fry monster. Who I assume is McMurderer, right? I figured McMurderer was beast off the beginning because McClown. So like was the who wait, who murdered McClown? The 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 worker at McDonald's, right? Right. right. So is he the McMurderer? Sure. Well, that's the only murder that really happens. Yeah, because like the orange guy in the suit who comes the out fry the, monster, the fry monster, who is played by Janice's dad. Really? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, he, he told me that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Holy shit! Fry monster is like, I can be your dad. Yeah the the movie ends on a very sweet note. They're like together just, on the couch. He's yeah. Like, He's like, I'll be your dad now. The kid's got, you know, fry monster dad. Yeah. We have a beautiful relationship. <laughs> it was very wholesome. So this is the, this is a wholesome tape. <laughs> yeah. I cannot this is one wait. for the whole family. I cannot wait to see the um, feature films for family. I was about to version. say that. I was about to, make, I was about to fucking say that. <laughs> I mean, knowing feature films for families, they would definitely keep in the part about how abortion is wrong. Oh, yeah. That's that's actually <laughs> the only part that's going to stay. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> so what, it's would just... the, what would the questions on the back of the feature films for families version be? Is, a, is abortion murder? <laughs> Can we learn about the benefits of chain restaurants on the economy? I don't know. <laughs> so... So then we get the credits, right? And the credits are just as a fucking musing as the rest of the movie. Yeah, there was some interesting shit in there. R.I.P. Who did they say, say R.I.P. to? Uh, to everyone who lost their lives in a McDonald's. Right. One like, one prayer. What? <laughs> R.I.P. Sad crying face. It shows like a field and someone that I think is supposed to be the producer say that McDonald's is like after him. He's like been living in a cave for months. Yeah. And starts talking about living in a cave. And then we see some like staticky, like creepy looking Ronald McDonald in the field. And I don't know if the static was actually my VHS tape because there was some parts like like these are these are recycled tapes. And so like I don't I don't know how much of the static we have is uh, intentional editing <laughs> yeah. and how much of that tracking issue was uh, having a janky tape. Yeah, this tape was wacky man this shit was crazy this was also pretty cheap i want to say it was like six dollars 66 cents i want to say it was 666 yeah so much coincidental like there's, parallels between the two of them yeah there's a lot of like overlapping themes we got the the mcdonald's imagery we got drugs <laughs> we got uh home video home video Man, the same list, price point. Yeah, the list goes on and on. But I mean, these are independent filmmakers. Yeah. And they have their own style. And uh, definitely check out Janice.click. That's how it spells is Janice.click. They, mm -hmm. they have other short films that they put out on VHS. They're all very limited runs. Um, I enjoy what they put out. They put out a lot of it on YouTube, too. So it's it's creepy. If you like weird, creepy shit, definitely check it out. Yeah. And he sent us like a bunch of stickers and all kinds of he stuff. He sent us some weird really shit nice. that he like scribbled all over yeah. and like crossed out <laughs> people's eyes on. A little, I got a little, it was a little voodoo doll. Yeah. 
He sent us a little gift box full of like creepy shit. I think I might be cursed now. <laughs> I know. I know. He has my address. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know. This was. These were both fun tapes. It's yeah, like, and they were short, so it wasn't you know nothing overstayed its welcome. Each in about a half hour. Um, Hollywood Home Video. It was one official selection at Hollywood uh, Hollyweed Film Festival. Mm -hmm. So you know, other people have seen it. Other people feel it's definitely worth watching. Uh, McMurder has been popping off in the Instagram VHS community. Absolutely. Um, and uh, I thought it was fun. I was cackling. Yeah, I laughed quite a lot. It's uh, I had no idea what to expect. No, I was honestly like, I was like, Henry, hold me. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, are we going to see some fucking snuff film shit? Like, what are we in for? All I had seen was a few screenshots of like the fry monster. And he sent us a sticker of the fry monster. Yeah. And he had a fry monster sticker on the fucking box, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like. I knew that. But I knew nothing else going into this. Um, I don't know. It's uh, I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed both of them. Yeah, both pleasant surprises. It's really interesting to see what people in the VHS community can come up with. And it's really cool seeing other people share it and um, keep the medium alive. <laughs> yeah. So again, thanks uh, Janice Click and Van Jasmine for sending both these our way. Really, really appreciate that. Yeah, thank you so much. And we're so excited to see what we get in the mail next. Yeah. Uh, also excited to see what they put out next. Like, they're both great artists. Like, I, for sure. You know, um, follow them originally because of VHS, but then everything else is just pretty fun. Mm -hmm. So, but I think that does just about do it for this episode. We're on just about every single social media out there Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. Go ahead and follow us there. Send us a DM. If you have any sort of suggestion or if you want to send us a tape or if you want to buy a sticker, we have stickers and they are awesome. Super rad, huge holographic decals. We have more stickers in the works right now. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you next week. And remember, be, be kind, kind, rewind. rewind.